Okay, fellas, we got a lot to go over. I want to be super fun about everything, but just from this three-minute clip, we saw some things that jumped out to us that were really dope, but also super scary. So if you've watched this video, feel free to click to the timestamp. And if you haven't watched this developer insight, watch it right now. The time before House of Wolves, are these two friends who I play games with all the time. You know, and so I knew this 3v3 thing was coming. And so my two, two like buddies and I, we would play threes for hours every night. Every night. And I didn't tell them what we were doing, you know, because you can't, you kind of want your friends to experience it the way that the way that players are going to. But I was like, oh, we're doing this thing. In my head, I'm like, we're doing this thing. So I want to like get the communication down, get used to playing with everyone. And we played for hours, hours and hours and hours of threes back in the day. And then trials came out. And trials was our Friday night. Every week, trials, you know, we played. But it was this time where you're like, oh, I have this thing to look forward to. I have this thing to look forward to every week. This like sweaty, stressful, high stakes activity. And right now, we are missing that. And I know we're missing it. I know we are missing it. We are going to fix it. Trials is back, and it's pretty insane. When we knew that Trials was coming back, the most important thing from us was to do it right. And so that means it's, it's taken us a little while. Every single life, every single round, every single match means something in Trials, whether you win or lose. Fight, win, fight again. This is your duty. When you've got the best players in an arena and it's power enabled, the stakes are incredibly high. It is a legitimate, difficult thing to be good at. With the reintroduction of Trials of Osiris, we are really taking a look at our whole sandbox and saying, like, okay, what is the right balance of things? We want to make sure that we really stick the landing with Trials. It's important that this doesn't go out half-baked. We are in the playtest lab every day playing Trials, trying to get it just right. We've been working to balance uh, you know, the abilities, the subclasses, the weapons, the armor, to make sure it is as fun and as fair as possible. We've done a lot because it's important. We're bringing back some amazing maps from Destiny 1, some of my favorites personally. Cauldron, Exodus Blue, and Anomaly. Some of the coolest armor and weapons from Destiny 1, in my opinion, were the Trials original gear set, and that's coming back. And when players go flawless, those armor pieces and weapons will react in a certain way. When you see someone in the tower, everybody's gonna know. Everyone's gonna know that they went flawless that week. It's just so cool to have like a pinnacle PvP activity return. We're hearing it from the players, we feel it ourselves, and I can't wait to bring back a version of Trials that matches what we remember from back in Destiny 1. Go. You make me proud. Okay, so let's go over a few things. First up, yes, upon reaching our fractaling goal today, a number of things happened. The Crucible playlist filled in all the way. We took a trip to the lighthouse, which was a really cool, dope cutscene where you got to see your own character, put the artifact in, and then Bungie actually dropped this developer insight on us, featuring Luke Smith giving the rundown of his favorite PvP mode, Trials of Osiris. No, not Trials of the Nine, not Trials of 4v4, Trials of Osiris 3v3 Elimination. The thing that Bungie's essentially been hitting at now for like six seven months we then open up to a number of different shots here and yes trials armor is back in full glory this is actually like og trials armor from destiny one it was sexy then and it is absolutely sexy now now we're going to be jumping around a little bit here but first up yes we have a number of old school maps returning to us one of them is Exodus Blue. This was a very popular Trials map. Another map is Cauldron. Not necessarily one of my favorite maps. Surprisingly, it played well, even in 6v6. And, of course, Anomaly, which was a classic Trials map. 
has a lot of close corridors, but deceptively has some pretty good lanes in place to allow people to successfully snipe. Those are the only three new maps that I saw. Now, something I want to bring up is that it appears that artifact power will be enabled next season for trials. If you see at the minute 40 mark, you'll notice that this Dawn Blade right here makes complete direct contact with the super, but doesn't kill this opponent. And notice that the opponent right next to his name, it's red, indicating that that guardian is probably like 10 or more levels higher than yourself, thus resulting in you doing less damage. Now, it appears that maybe power level will be enabled. And if it's like what it used to be or what it currently even is, I believe you do like what? A third less damage if you are 10 levels less than your opponent and you take 133% more damage when they're higher level as well. Now, I'm not sure that's still gonna be the case, but it appears that power level will be enabled next season for Trials. And that's how it used to be originally back in Trials of Osiris. So if Bungie is still sticking in that same format that'll be the case here the difference is back in d1 we had a power cap here in destiny 2 though with artifact mods and the artifact in general you don't have a power cap meaning if you turn in bounties every single day of your life and you're constantly grinding out for xp those additional power levels are going to greatly benefit you simultaneously though it doesn't necessarily make things equal for everybody obviously the guy that's putting in like 100 plus hours a week grinding experience is obviously going to have the greater edge again i have no confirmation on this only from that single clip we see a number of other clips though where guardians do have that red right next to their name in terms of their opponents which does indicate that opponent being a higher level than them and on top of that we even have a screenshot of somebody's power level being over 1000 there so yes artifact power seems to be enabled another thing i want to bring up is that the damage values overall are extremely funky. If you take, for instance, the spare rations, it does 270 damage per crit, which is extremely funky. You even have Randy right here doing 320 crit damage, a golden gun here doing 2,134 body shot damage, as well as 4,564 crit damage. A lot of weird damage values, which could be one of two things. First up, it could just be random numbers. This is Bungie in their playtest environment. Maybe they were just messing around with some stuff and they had different various numbers jumping out. But as someone who has actually been to Bungie a number of times, who has been back there and played with alpha builds before being released, I have never seen damage values tweaked on this level, unless it was something done intentional on Bungie's part, which takes us to the second point. The second point could actually be Bungie introducing an entirely new sandbox that will only be effective inside of trials. Now, I know this sounds crazy, and for those that don't understand, just imagine that Bungie wakes up tomorrow, and all of a sudden, Thorn has just murdered everybody in trials over the past weekend. Instead of going in there and actually tuning up Thorn across the entire sandbox, instead, they just tune Thorn up inside of trials, maybe toning the damage down just slightly to make it less effective. For the longest time, especially back in Destiny 1, Many people complain that PvE was ruined because of PvP. This could actually be Bungie's answer to fixing that by separating the sandboxes finally. Not only that, if you notice that the damage values themselves are much greater, it's obvious that Guardian Health is not your base 190 to 200. It's higher. Obviously, like maybe 800, maybe even 1,000. I'm not sure. But with a giant leap there in damage values and health pool, you actually have more room there to correct weapons and more room to actually fine-tune damage. Now, I'm not going to say this is either a good thing or a bad thing because I have no idea. Those are my only two takes on that. It sounds crazy. It also sounds like way too much work. And Bungie normally has been married up to this one sandbox rules all forever now. If they are actually finally separating sandboxes, oh, they for real. They ain't messing around, fellas. This is big boy stuff. It also means we'll have to review things like two, three times. What's trash in regular PvP might be amazing in trials. I have no idea. Now, another thing that jumped out to us, it was stated at 142 from Lars that every match means something in trials. Now, notice that Bungie normally doesn't say things like that just randomly, which tells me that there may actually be something in place to allow people to maybe not go flawless, but at least reach the lighthouse by just participating in trials. I don't know. That's just like me guessing here. But the fact that he points out that every match means something, whereas like OG Trials of Osiris was like, hey, you either go flawless or you go home. Get good, bro. Kind of harsh. I know. That may be the case even here, or we can believe Lars and think that there may be something there that allows for anyone 
to gain something, at least something, from obtaining a single win inside of trials. Now, moving on, Luke Smith actually posted to Twitter, and if you know Luke, he rarely says anything. He says, I genuinely love Trials of Osiris and Destiny. I think it's clear in the Dev Insights piece below that our team does too. D2 needs aspirational experiences like Trials and PvP, and on March 13th, some of those long missing feelings will return. Trials uses connection base and card state matchmaking. When you're on the cusp of visiting the new lighthouse, the one you all built with with tons of fractaline and effort, we want you to be facing someone in a similar spot. He concludes this by saying we'll have more on Season 10 and Trials over the next few weeks. For now, here's a little Season of the Worthy teaser from the team. See you soon. So first up, notice that there's a sword right here, right? I, I don't know. What is this? Is this just like a Trials-based sword? But to the left, it appears to be one of those freaky puzzles that we always get from Bungie. I can't make anything else out. The sword doesn't necessarily remind me of an exotic, but considering that we are getting a ton of sword buffs, actually a complete sword overhaul next season, I don't think Luke Smith would be putting the sword out there for no reason. And does it kind of got like a Rasputin Warmind theme to it? Maybe I'm just seeing stuff, I don't know. But back to what he said about trials using connection base and card state matchmaking. From what it appears, there seems to be a hybrid matchmaking system here at play that probably starts off as like connection base, and then as you get closer to achieving that flawless win or going to the lighthouse will be facing people with similar wins on their card again similar to like og trials that's how it was back then just about every flawless game that you played you were playing someone else who was also going for flawless which made it very sweaty i'm talking about ball dripping sweat now, it could be something like, I don't know, games one through four, where it's connection-based matchmaking, and then games five through seven will most likely be the card-based matchmaking. Again, at this point, we're just completely speculating here. Now, last but not least, one more thing I wanted to include. At the three minute and 28 mark, we see a warlock sitting down and on his back. That's right, boys and girls, Doctrine of Passing. It's got a very similar gun model. It appears that it might be returning to us next season, which does make a lot of sense, considering the sheer amount of auto rifle buffs that are going out. Now, Doctrine of Passing was hands down like the best weapon for a good bit back in Destiny 1. I made many videos hating on that weapon, but it was good, man. Now, back then, it was a 900 round per minute auto rifle. We don't have 900s, though, inside of Destiny 2, at least not 900 round per minute auto rifles. We've got 900 round per minute SMGs. So, Bungie can actually introduce this weapon in two ways. They can either introduce it as a completely new weapon for a completely new archetype, or they could just bring it to us as a 720. I think it's more likely that it will just be a 720, considering that 720s are receiving one of the best buffs amongst all the auto rifles next season. Oh, and one more thing. I about forgot this one. Yes, Flawless Armor is returning, or at least Flawless Ornaments. That's right, for my folks that actually go Flawless, you'll have some glow to show it off, man, which I'm happy to see. The main thing that I really wanna see is Adept Weapons, which was actually Flawless Base Weapons. We saw this screenshot here right before they started talking about the Flawless Gear, which could indicate Adept Weapons. And again, for my folks that don't know what Adept Weapons are, Adept weapons were weapons given to you if you went flawless, and they normally came with a second perk intrinsically. So for like Destiny 1, all Adept weapons in year 2 came with like Last Resort which was a perk that gave you benefits when you were the last person left on your fire team alive. Now, again, I'm not sure if that's going to be the case here, but I would hope so, considering that Trials of the Nine did have ornaments for Flawless, and not many people really cared about it. Like, you look good, yeah, but that was about it. Nobody really got into it. Not like on the level of getting that Doctrine of Passing Adept, right? Because it actually changed the entire weapon cosmetically. Instead of it being that gold color, it would be like this nice shimmering black color. Oh, it's sexy! So, guys, that is our breakdown. If I missed anything, and I probably did, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Considering that the next season is right around the corner, I'm sure Bungie's going to be dropping all kinds of hints as well as teasers here in the next few days. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.